Hi, I'm Stuart Ward from Nourishing Moves. Uh, I'm going to use this video as a, a chance to show you how to swing the steel mace, this ancient training tool. And I thought, what better place to film this video than this historic site at Knowlton Church? So why swing a steel mace? And what we're trying to do here is develop circular strength around fluid power. Uh, it teaches us to connect the shoulders and the hips and it's great for grapplers and martial artists who want to throw and develop strength in this pattern. It's also good to build mobility through the upper body and also fun to swing. So I should quickly show you what it is I'm going to be uh, talking you through today. And we're just going to look at the 360 swing. So we're swinging the mace around the head in this circular way. Okay, so I'm going to use the rest of the video then to show you how I put this together, how I teach someone to swing a mace. So when I'm training someone for the first time who's never used a mace before and I want to teach them the 360, I start by showing them the halo drill. And the halo is something you'll be familiar with. You might have done it with a steel club or perhaps a kettlebell and they're great tools to learn this. But we're working with a mace today so we'll do the halo with a mace. So I'm just taking a grip on the gnarled part of the steel mace and circling it around the head. And really using this short as a, as a warm-up, but also as a, 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 like a movement assessment, just to check that you've got the mobility through the shoulders, elbows, wrists, and the upper back to move this mace in a circular way. And just seeing how it feels on both sides. If you're really struggling with this, I'd suggest you go and work on some mobility flexibility drills. And which one, I'll cover that in a future lesson, um, just to help loosen the upper body so it's got the ability to swing this mace in this circular way. So if you're happy with the halo, we can move to the next step. And that's learning the warrior position. So now we're holding the lower part of the mace, making sure you've got the hands on the knolled part rather than the smooth part. And we're holding it by the belt line here, dropping the shoulders and just learning to stabilize the body and balance the mace in this position which uh, isn't always so easy. It's also a good chance to start, start talking about the body shape that we want to hold while swinging a mace. And it's not too different from many forms of uh, training. We're looking to keep the rib cage down. We're looking to brace the abs gently. We're looking to drop the shoulders and have a nice wide stance so you've got a good base to move from. When we're swinging a mace, we don't want complete tension Tension's good for some exercises like deadlifts and maybe the kettlebell swing at times, but we need to feel relaxed to win the mace a bit more. So we need a connection, but uh, with some um, fluid ability to move with it. So that's what we're being aware of here. Rather than a complete brace, just uh, gently engaged. Once you're happy with that warrior position, we can then move into the front pendulum. And this is a great drill, which almost teaches your body how to move with the mace. You'll feel the weight change of your feet and uh, you'll feel that swing working through the body. So we hold the lower part of the mace away from the bell, take a nice grip. Remember the body mechanics of keeping the ribs dropped, the waist engaged and the shoulders dropped. Then we just start to, with a little flick of the wrist, change the weight in the feet slightly as well. And just feel that pendulum effect. Look to notice how the mace floats before it changes direction. So it moves to its furthest point and changes. And then we can start to add a little bit more momentum into it as we bring the mace up so it's running parallel to the floor. And over time with practice, starting to notice how the body feels while doing this. Feel that weight change, feel the core working, the body stabilizing and assisting that transition. So time spent doing this is time well spent. Once you're happy with the front pendulum, we're then ready to move into the rear pendulum in the back position. So we take the mace behind us and we just look at this shape to start with, this back position. And here we're looking to flare the elbows up, drop the hands down to the nape of the neck. And we're looking to find a, as natural a position as you can make. So we don't want the elbows closed in and we don't want to flare them out. It's somewhere natural in the middle. And then we just think of our body structure. We're dropping our rib cage and we're keeping the tone in the waist here, lifting up through the chest. 
once you're happy with that, we start moving into the rear pendulum. And again, like the front pendulum, just listening to the weight change in the feet, feeling the core engage, and feel that mace float from one side to the other. And in particular, you're looking to feel the furthest point before it changes direction. You feel the float, feel it change. Just building that sensitivity in this rear pendulum swing. So the common problem here is, what will happen is the mace will start to swing a little forwards and backwards like this. But what you're really focusing on is only letting the mace swing from side to side. And when you're happy with that, we can bring it down back in front of our body to this warrior position. So once you're happy with this warrior position, once you're happy with the front and rear pendulum, we're ready to move into the 360 spin. 360 swing. So what I like to uh, get people to focus on as they begin this swing is lifting from the elbows, dropping the mace or dumping the mace behind the head so we come back into this back position and then coming back to the swing a few times or the rear pendulum and when you feel ready you can pull it back to warrior position. Lift the elbows, swing a few times, pull back to this warrior position. What you'll notice is, whichever hand is on top, that's the direction we're going to swing it. You don't have to, but it often feels easiest. It's a nice structure to start with. And then, of course, you can swing it both ways. But in this uh, case, when we're first learning, top hand, point the finger, that's the direction the mace goes. A really important cue here is to always uh, imagine that you're swinging the mace in a corridor. So we don't want to chuck the mace behind us, because then it'd be really hard to pull it through. If you lead from the elbows, so the mace is coming up into this block position, then dump the mace behind the head to this back position, trying to focus on the bull horns, and pull it back to your warrior position, this belt line. Swing with the back pendulum and pull it back. And when you're getting confident with this, we can just put it all together. Lift the elbows, block, dump the mace, pull back to the warrior position hands to the belt line. And when you're first learning, you want to make it quite stoppy-starty in that you find the finished position and then start again. Finish and then start again. And naturally you want to practice both sides, so we might place the other hand on top. That's directing where the mace is going to swing. Feeling the hands go down to the nape of the neck and just developing that skill with the timing. We never want to fight the mace. If you're trying to create a circular movement, not create sharp, jerky movements. Okay. So that's the steps I would suggest you take. Very simple, there's lots of other drills you can do, but I find that those are often the most beneficial, the most straightforward. So uh, get practicing. Any questions, drop them in the comments below. I'll do my best to help you with those. Thanks for watching and I hope this helps you.